So in this video, we are going to go over a circuit protection method used to protect against overvoltage, as opposed to a circuit that protects against overcurrent or reverse polarity. The first question you may want to ask is, why would I ever want to do this? Shouldn't it be enough to just tell the person who's using the pedal, hey, don't go over 9 volts? Well, you would think that this would be the obvious answer. Gee willikers, it must be obvious day on Camp Stupid. But where I see this occurring most often is in pedals that use charge pumps. Charge pump ICs such as the 7660 series and the 1044 series, though sometimes are used to invert power for old school PNP driven fuzzes, are also used to double the voltage from 9 volts to almost 18 volts. This is done to increase the headroom on the pedal and can be found on several popular overdrive and boost pedals such as the Klon Centaur and the Fortin 33 Boost. The problem is when someone goes, hey, if 9 volts is giving me this much headroom, if I plug in an 18 volt supply, I'll get even more headroom, right? Well, let's take a look at this data sheet real quick. If I scroll down, you'll see right here that the maximum supply voltage for this chip is 13 volts. So, if I were to apply 18 volts to it, this is what's going to happen to the chip. Hmm, that's no good. And now that the IC is fried, you'll have to go tell your friend to open the pedal and replace the dead chip. Most likely, he isn't going to know how to do that. So, wouldn't it be nice if there was a circuit we could implement that would stop the device from going over a certain voltage, and if it does, make it so that the part doesn't need to be physically replaced or desoldered every time this were to happen? This is a schematic of what is called a crowbar circuit. It uses a resettable fuse, two capacitors, a Zener diode, and a silicon controlled rectifier, also known as an SCR or thyristor. So how does it work? Well, in this example, we start with a resettable fuse. The thing to note is the maximum current hold, in this case, is 100 milliamps. I didn't need it to be that big, but that was the smallest one that I could find that I had on hand. Next we have a Zener diode. I'm using a 1N5239 Zener diode, which has a nominal Zener voltage of 9.1 volts. But what you really need to pay attention to, and this is something you would have to check out on the datasheet, is what is the maximum Zener voltage? And according to On Semiconductor, the datasheet says that this one can go up to 9.555 volts. Next, we have a simple 1K quarter watt resistor pulling down the ground for the gate pin on the SCR. Next, we also have the uh, two capacitors here. So C1 is a 100 nanofarad capacitor that will be close to the anode of the SCR to prevent any false triggering. We also have C2 over here, which is a 47 nanofarad capacitor that is close to the gate pin of the SCR, also to help prevent false triggering. You want to make sure that the value for C2 is under 100 nanofarad, just because this guy is trying to protect against high frequency noises. Lastly, we have the SCR itself. I'm using an 2N5064, which that's because they're easy to come by and they meet the needs of the circuit. The primary things to look for is can it handle the protected voltages? So let's take a look at the data sheet real quick. Firstly, can it handle the protected voltages as I just said? The voltage off state max is 200 volts. That should be plenty enough for what we're anticipating is going to be thrown at this guitar pedal. Way over 18 volts, so I think we're good there. The maximum current hold state here, that is 800 milliamps, which is larger than our typical pedal needs, and more importantly is larger than the hold current for the resettable fuse. So this works. The maximum gate trigger voltage right here, that's 800 millivolts. So in the worst case scenario, if that Zener's maximum Zener voltage were to hit 9.555 volts, the voltage will need to go another 800 millivolts higher before anything happens. So somewhere around 10.35 volts. This is the value that we're actually trying to protect against going over. So what happens in the circuit if we were to apply just 9 volts? Well, the Zener diode doesn't trigger, and therefore it never applies the 800 millivolts to the gate of the thyristor. So, the circuit works normally. If I apply a little more voltage, once I reach a point where the Zener diode opens up, such as around 9.6 volts, 
it starts providing voltage to the gate of the SCR. Once the Zener diode opens up enough excess voltage to reach 800 millivolts, the SCR is triggered and it clamps to ground. And as the current draw for the short circuit occurs, it'll eventually reach a current draw that's over 100 milliamps, which will make the resettable fuse pop and thusly stops the circuit from powering anything, saving the circuitry from being fried. One thing to note that may be a little bit odd if you've never worked with resettable fuses is when you lower the voltage back to 9 volts after exceeding the voltage specs for this whole circuit, the circuit's not going to reactivate. You will actually have to unplug the circuit from power after lowering the voltage, then plug it back in to get it to work. Another thing to note too is the value here for D2, the shocky diode. It's to provide a little bit more of a voltage drop for the charge boost that's coming up ahead of it. Now, in this case, the maximum voltage for the TC7660 was 13 volts, which is well higher than that 10.35 volts we mentioned earlier. But if you're using something like the Max 1044, I think its maximum voltage is closer to 10 volts. So having a little bit of a voltage drop right here helps protect that circuit a little bit further. Anyways, let's take a look at this on the bench. So here we have the circuit on a breadboard. Instead of using a charge pump, I'm using a current limiting resistor and an LED to indicate if we got power going through, but everything else should be the same. We have our PTC resettable fuse here. Kind of looks like a ceramic disc capacitor, but it's actually the fuse. We have our 100 nanofarad capacitor here for preventing false triggering on the anode of the SCR. We have our 1K pull-down resistor here. You can probably see maybe between the two legs here we have a... Uh, a film capacitor, that's the 47 nanofarad film capacitor on the gate pin of the SCR. We have our 9.1 volt Zener diode right here. We have our SCR right here, kind of looks like a little transistor, but that's the SCR. And then we have the uh, output shocky diode there for a little bit of a voltage drop. So here we are. If you note, I'm right now pushing 9 volts to the circuit, and you can see that I got 8 milliamps driving that LED. So what we're going to do is we're going to slowly increase the voltage and watch what happens. As I raise it up to 9.1, you can see that it's not really doing anything. Remember that whole 9.555 Zener voltage? Well, we're about to see what happens. Oh, this one, 9.4 seems to be the right amount to trigger it. Uh, there's always a little bit of tolerance and wiggle room with these things. That's why you always just look at the maximum values just to be sure. And heck, let's just drive it all the way up. So now we're at 10 volts. Obviously the LED is off and the circuit isn't really doing anything. So anything from here out on the circuit is completely protected. <clears throat> but one of the things you're probably noting on there is I went from an 8 milliamp draw to a 40 milliamp draw. That is actually being a conversion of current to heat on this resettable fuse. So what it's actually doing is it's heating up the parts on the inside to blow open and therefore not let any actual stuff go on after the circuit. But these guys do get a little bit hot. Now one thing you also don't want to do is put a heat sink on it because the more the thing is getting its heat back down to normal temperatures, the more current it's gonna to try to draw and then it may completely just fry apart. As a matter of fact, you'll actually note that right now it's not terribly hot, but as you put your finger on it, it's gonna get hotter and hotter and hotter. And you'll also note here that the uh, current's gonna rise when I do that. And so, and then when I let go, the current goes back down because my hand is not being a heat sink anymore for it. But as I mentioned earlier, if I drop the voltage, if I drop it back down to 9 volts, circuit doesn't turn on. What has to be done is you have to unplug it and then plug it back in. And then it works. As of like speed of how it works, just plugging it in with a large volt or large voltage. Um, well, let's do the earlier example where someone decides to increase this thing up to 18 volts. When we plug it in, it flickers for a brief second and goes nowhere. So there you go. 
That is a crowbar circuit. So I hope that gives you guys some ideas of what you can do to protect your circuits from an over voltage situation. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you like these kind of videos, press that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you wish to support our site, visit us at www.diyguitarpedals.com.au and check out our parts and our kits and our PCBs as that will really help us out. Anyways, that's all for now and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.